Justice, Indira Banerjee ji, will be joining us later on. So we will be beginning with the event. Honorable Mr. Justice, Anil Kumar Sinha will also be joining us. Hello, hello. I request everyone to please rise up for our guests. A very good evening to all present here. On behalf of the organizing committee, management, staff, and students of Lloyd Law College, I, Apoor Gautam, along with my co-anchor, Ms. Sarah Sharma, feel extremely honored and delighted to welcome you all to the valedictory function of Professor N. R. Madhava Menon Asian Jural Conclave 2022. This event comprises of Professor N. R. Madhava Menon Asian Mooting Competition, Law Students Conference, and Colloquium. It is with immense gratitude and pleasure that we welcome our esteemed guests. I would like to welcome our chief guest, Honorable Miss Justice Indira Banerjee, Judge Supreme Court of India, who will be joining us later on. Our guest of honor, Honorable Mr. Justice Anil Kumar Sinha, Judge Supreme Court of Nepal. Honorable Mr. Justice Arjuna Obesikre, Judge Supreme Court of Sri Lanka. 
I would also take this opportunity to welcome Honorable Mr. Justice Zafar Ahmed, Judge, High Court Division, Supreme Court of Bangladesh. Professor Dr. Manoj Kumar Sinha, Director, Indian Law Institute, New Delhi. Professor Dr. S. Seva Kumar, Senior Professor, Indian Law Institute, New Delhi, former member, Law Commission of India, Honorary Administrator, Asian Jural Conclave. Mr. R. Venkat Ramani, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India, former member, Law Commission of India, Co-Chair, Asian Jural Conclave. Mr. Manohar Tharani, President, Lloyd Law College, Co-Chair, Asian Jural Conclave. Professor Dr. Lisa P. Lukos, Professor Guru Gobind Singh Indraprastha University, Deputy Administrator, Asian Jural Conclave. Advocate Ms. Anju Jain, Chief Coordinator, Asian Jural Conclave. Professor Dr. Mohammed Salem, Director, Lloyd Law College, General Coordinator, Asian Jural Conclave. Dr. Akhilesh Kumar Khan, Deputy Director, Lloyd Law College, Secretary General, Asian Jural Conclave. Dr. Madhukar Sharma, Deputy Director, Academics, Lloyd Law College, Coordinator, Asian Jural Conclave. May I now request Professor Dr. Esteva Kumar, Senior Professor, Indian Law Institute, New Delhi, former member, Law Commission of India, Honorary Administrator, Asian Jural Conclave, to welcome our guest of honor, Honorable Mr. Justice Anil Kumar Sena, Judge, Supreme Court of Nepal. Thank you, sir. May I now request Mr. Manohar Therani, President, Lloyd Law College, Co-Chair, Asian Jural Conclave, to welcome our special guest, Professor Dr. Manoj Kumar Sena. Thank you, sir. We shall now begin with the program by seeking the blessings of Goddess Saraswati. I very humbly request our honorable chief guest, guest of honor and other dignitaries to kindly join and light the sacred lamp. Thank you, Your Ladyship. 
Thank you, everyone. As we begin with the valedictory function, I would like to invite Mr. Manohar Therani to give the welcome address. Mr. Manohar Therani is the president of Lloyd Law College and co-chair of the Asian Jural Conclave. I would like to invite Sir to formally welcome our guests and the participants. Thank you. Respected Chief Guest of the Day, Honorable Ms. Justice Indira Banerjee, Madam, Supreme Court of India, Respected Guest of Honor, Honorable Mr. Justice Arjuna Obisekri, Supreme Court of Sri Lanka, Honorable Mr. Justice Anil Kumar Sinha, sir, Judge Supreme Court of Nepal, Respected Special Invitees, Honorable Mr. Justice Zafar Ahmed, sir, Judge High Court Division, Supreme Court of Bangladesh, Professor Dr. Manoj Kumar Sinha, sir, Director, Indian Law Institute, Distinguished Guests, Shri R. Venkitri, sir, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India, and Co-Chairperson, Professor Anna Madha Menon, Asian Jewel Conclave, Professor S. Sivkumar, sir, Honorary Asian Jewel Conclave Administrator, Senior Professor, Indian Law Institute, and former member, Law Commission of India, <clears throat> Mr. Ramakrishnan Menon, sir, son of a very, our mentor, Guru, Padmabhushan Madha Menon, sir, Professor Dr. Lisa P. Lukus, Professor G.G. S.I.P. University, Dr. Mohammed Salim, sir, Director, Lloyd Law College, Dr. Aklesh Kumar Khan, sir, Professor Malkiraja Goda, sir, Professor Vikram, sir, Professor Madhukar, sir, regional and, and national administrators, eminent dignitaries, faculty members, dear participants, and my very dear students. Good evening and a very, very warm welcome to all of you. It is with immense pleasure that I welcome all of you to the validatory session of the Professor Anna Madha Menon, Asian June Conclave 2022. At the outset, I thank you all in making this conclave such a vibrant and meaningful platform for intellectual exchange ideas and thoughts. I consider it a great privilege and honor for us to host the event in its seventh edition. It was two exciting and enriching days as we successfully conducted Professor N. R. Madha Menon Asian Jewel Conclave. It gives me immense pleasure to see the participation of many teams from Asia to compete and learn from each other. The Indian round of the competition was also conducted virtually at national level to select the seven best teams from India to participate in the Asian round. In the present Judicial Collegium, we have witnessed more than 100 registration from the Asian and the Indian legal community. We are extremely indebted to Padma Bhushan, late Professor Dr. N. R. Madhav Menon, sir, our beloved mentor, great visionary, and father of modern Indian legal education, for constantly believing in us and giving us the confidence to move ahead. There can't be a better tribute to Sir by carrying out his legacy of young legal minds by extending the horizon of the competition from South Asia to the entire continent of Asia. Now we take this enclave as a humble and sincere effort and mission to take forward our Guru's legacy. We are shortly going to be joined by our chief guest, Honorable Miss Justice Indra Energy. I would like to sincerely and give a heartfelt thanks to Madam for accepting our invitation to be the chief guest at this function. Honorable Lechi, we also had the pleasure of being blessed by you on many past occasions for Menenses Conclave in the last seven years. It's, it's with many gratitude that we extend a very, very warm welcome to our chief guest, who is shortly going to arrive. We are very grateful by the gracious presence of Honorable Mr. Justice Arjuna Obasekri, Judge Supreme Court of Sri Lanka, as a guest of honor. Though Lordship has joined us through the virtual mode, your presence serves as an inspiration to all the students and participants in the competition. A very, very warm welcome to you, sir. 
We are honored today with the gracious presence of Honorable Mr. Justice Anil Kumar Sinha, sir, Judge Supreme Court in Nepal, as the guest of honor. We are blessed by your presence on many occasions in the past and the support and guidance given for our academic endeavors in achieving the vision of our mentor and guru, Menon, sir. Your Lordship's acceptance of our humble invitation reaffirms your commitment to mentor law students to grow into responsible and capable legal professionals. We extend a very, very warm welcome to you, sir. We are also honored by Honorable Mr. Justice Jafar Ahmed, sir, Judge, High Court Division, Supreme Court of Bangladesh, to accept our invitation to find some time from his busy school to join through online mode. We extend a very warm welcome to your Lordship as a special invitee to this function. It's our great privilege and honor to welcome Professor Dr. Manoj Kumar Sinha, sir, Director, Indian Law Institute, to be the special invitee for this event. Sir's thoughts on importance of constitution during judicial colloquium will be remembered for a long time and will serve as a guiding force for young constitutional law students. Sir has always supported the scholarly pursuit which we undertook for the growth of legal education in India. Dear sir, I extend a very, very warm welcome to you. I extend a very warm welcome to our very own Sri R. Venkatre, sir, Senior Wicket, Supreme Court of India, and Co-Chair, Professor N. R. Madhav Menon, Asia Junior Conclave. Sir, is a true well-wisher and advisor to our college. We feel blessed for all the support and guidance he has extended to us in every stage of our academic growth and in achieving our vision. Heartiest welcome, sir. <clears throat> I'm truly honored to welcome Professor Dr. S. Sir Kumar, sir, Senior Professor, India Law Institute. Sir is a very dear friend of the Institute and a true disciple of our guru and mentor, Professor Madhav Menon, sir. He is the driving force behind the whole initiative and has meticulously planned and organized this meeting, conference, and colloquium. Under his able guidance, the competition has been extended to the entire continent of Asia. Yes, sir. A very, very warm welcome to you. I'd like to take this opportunity and thank Mrs. Sina for gracing this occasion along with Mr. Sina. Thank you very much, ma'am, for coming. We are really honored by your presence. And also thank you to Mrs. Dankarabi for bringing her fire soul here. Thank you so much, madam, for coming. <laughs> Excellent, a very warm welcome to Professor Dr. Lisa P. Lukus, Professor G.G. SIP, UST, and Deputy Administration, Asia Junior Country, Professor Malikojan Goda, sir. Professor Madhuka sir, Professor Vikram sir, who has worked tirelessly for the conduct of the mooting competition, colloquium, and student conference. A very, very warm welcome to all of you. We are grateful to our enthusiasts and dynamic director, Dr. Mohamed Salim sir, and deputy director, Dr. Atlesh Kumar Khan, for the commitment and hard work in the development of the institution and organizing this flagship event. A very, very warm welcome to you, sir. The adjudicators for the present conclave were drawn from legal academia, bar, and bench from across Asia. I extend a heartfelt welcome to you all. I express heartfelt gratitude to all learned judges in the meeting, student conference and chairs, co-chairs, speakers, and presenters in the colloquium for sharing their experience and expertise. It shows your unparalleled devotion in the growth of legal education and successful conductor Professor N. R. Madhav Menon, Asian Journal Conclave. The diversity and vibrancy of the gathering here ensures awareness about the Asian legal system, pedagogies, and cultural exchanges. I want to applaud all the participants for the hard work they have put in and are proudly representing their countries and institutions. I hope that you would have completed this competition with fond memories. It was a great pleasure to host this young, vibrant participants. I wish you all the best and welcome you all to the validatory function of this competition. Very, very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would now like to invite Dr. Akhilesh Kumar Khan, Deputy Director, Lloyd Law College, and Secretary General, Asian Jural Conclave, to present the report of the event.
Thank you. A very good evening to the chief guest of the validity function, uh, Honorable Ms. Justice Indra Banerjee, who is going to join us soon. The guest of honors of the validity function, Honorable Mr. Justice Anil Kumar Sinha, sir, Judge Supreme Court of Nepal. Honorable Mr. Justice Arjuna Obisikre, Judge Supreme Court of Sri Lanka, who, who has joined us and also adjudicated the final round. I would also take this opportunity to welcome Honorable Mr. Justice Zafar Ahmed, sir, Judge High Court of Division, Supreme Court of Bangladesh, Professor Dr. Manoj Kumar Sinha, sir, Director, Indian Law Institute, New Delhi. Honorable judges of the final round who have joined online, Honorable Mr. Justice Pankaj Bhandari, Judge Rajasthan High Court. Honorable Mr. Justice Ravinath Tilhari, Judge High Court of Andhra Pradesh. Honorable Mr. Justice Amit Bansal, Judge High Court of Delhi. And Honorable Mr. Justice C.S. Dias, Judge High Court of Kerala. Our distinguished dignitaries, Professor Dr. S. Siva Kumar, Senior Professor, Indian Law Institute, and former member Law Commission of India, also, honorary administrator of this program, Asian Jural Conclave, Mr. R. Venkatramni, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India, former member, Law Commission of India, and co-chair of this Asian Jural Conclave, Mr. Manohar Therani, President, Lloyd Law College, co-chair, Asian Jural Conclave, Professor Dr. Lisa P. Lukos, Professor GGSIP University, Deputy Administrator, Asian Jural Conclave, Advocate, Ms. Anju Jain, Chief Coordinator, Asian Jural Conclave, Professor Dr. Muhammad Salim, Director, Lloyd Law College and General Coordinator, Asian Jural Conclave, Dr. Madhukar Sharma, Deputy Director, Academics, Lloyd Law College and uh, Coordinator, Asian Jural Conclave, the Regional Administrators, National Administrators, the Adjudicators from the Bar Academia and dear students. Professor N. R. Madhma Benan South, South Asian Mooting Competition was envisaged by Professor Dr. S. Siva Kumar, and it was held at Lloyd Law College for the first time in 2015, with an aim to provide the right academic and stimulated exposure to the budding law students and polish their skill sets further. Over a period of seven years, it has brought a paradigm shift in law education and training in the Asian countries and is doing the much needed task of connecting the legal fraternities, not just across South Asian countries, but from this edition across Asian countries too. In the seventh edition of this competition, it is renamed as Professor N. R. Madhma Menon Asian Jural Conclave 21-22. This Jural Conclave is being organized by Lloyd Law College with technical support from Menon Institute of Legal Advocacy and Training, Millard, from 25th to 27th February 2022, this time in hybrid mode. The world has faced new challenges in the last past two years. The organizing committee too took up the same and with no break last year, this competition was held on online mode completely. But this year we have organized it through hybrid mode. The inaugural function of Professor N. R. Madhma Menon Asian Jural Conclave 21-22 was held on 26th February 2022. It was graced by the presence and inaugural address by Honorable Mr. Justice A. M. Khanvilkar, Judge Supreme Court of India as the chief guest. There were two stages of the competition, the India round and the Asian round. The India round of the competition was held from 26th to 28th November 2021, where a total of seven teams from India qualified for the Asian round. The Asian round over these three days witnessed a participation of over 100 participants through the three events held at Lloyd Law College, Greater Noida via hybrid mode. The mode proposition of this Asian round has been authored by Dr. Anand Vijay Maria, Advocate Supreme Court of India, and settled by Mr. R. Venkatramni, Senior Advocate Supreme Court of India, based on the theme of right to health, issues and challenges in Asia. There were four stages of the competition, the preliminary, one, preliminary round, quarters, semi-final, and the final. The first three rounds were just 
by over 50 adjudicators from the bar bench and academia while the final final round was judged by five sitting judges from sri lanka and india honorable mr justice arjuna obasikre judge supreme court of sri lanka honorable mr justice pankaj bhandari judge rajasthan high court honorable mr justice ravinath tilhari judge high court of andhra pradesh honorable mr justice amit bansal judge high court of delhi and honorable mr c s uh, justice um, c s dais judge high court of kerala had adjudicated the final round of this competition mooting competition in the students conference a total number of 18 research articles on different sub themes under technology and future of law were presented the th sub themes were right to education and digital divide biotechnology and bio weapons the rights of persons and with disability and technological hurdles artificial intelligence and future of law and territorial party uh, partitioning versus borderless internet ju uh, jurisdictional issues Gen genetic engineering and partnering uh, higher life forms ethical and legal issues digital governance structural and managerial issues and so on honorable mr justice sapna pradhan malla uh, a third event a commonwealth comparative constitution and public law colloquium on a new asia and diverse constitutional framework was held on 26th and 27th february 2022 the five technical sessions were based on the sub themes constitution and constitutionalism constitutional change and constitutional stability international law and constitution making international human rights and the constitutions legal pluralism and political pluralism honorable miss justice sapna pradhan malla judge supreme court of nepal was the chief guest of opening session of colloquium the distinguished speaker of technical sessions of the colloquium included the judges from Supreme Court of South Asian Region, vice chancellors from law schools, and faculty members from renowned institutions across the South Asian Region. So, Asian Region. As the Secretary General, Asian Jural Conclave, I would like to take, uh, like to say that organizing committee has continuously strived for a fair and transparent competi competition. It was ensured that the rounds are diligently maintained fairness and transparency right from the compilation of moot proposition to the adjudication of each round each step of the competition uh, compilation of moot proposition evaluation of memorials and the adjud adjudication of the competition is done under a scholarly guidance of the academia bar and bench the organizing committee has industriously aimed at providing a healthy mooting comp experience to every single competing team in the competition. The law school classes are effective at teaching fundamental principles of law and introducing students to the process of legal reasoning, but they do either little to teach students how to make the innumerable strategic choices that lawyers are, lawyers are facing with every day. This is where our Asian Zural Conclave 21-22 finds a place. The principal skill that beginning lawyers should learn is how to give short, structured answer to judges' question. And here arrives the significance of research. Once legal research must be such that it frees you from the constants of logic imposed by your briefs and preparation. And further, it encourages you to engage with questions from your judges. Before we conclude on this note, let's remember what the famous philosopher John Stuart Mill inspired us through these words in his autobiography. And I quote, one of the evils most liable to attend on any sort of early proficiency and which often fatally blights its promise my father most anxiously guarded against this was self concept he kept me with extreme vigilance out of the way hearing myself praised or being led to make self flattering comparison between myself and others unquote we hope that the times become better 
and we may organize the next edition of this rural conclave in a completely offline mode what we were doing in the last five season and i hope we will be able to welcome all the participants who are joining us uh, in last two years through online mode we'll be able to again give them a better hospitality in our campus with this note i close my uh, this uh, report by saying you thank you for your support and guidance thank you everyone thank you so much sir we have with us professor dr s siva kumar so a senior professor indian law institute new delhi former member law commission of india honorary administrator asian jural conclave so i request you to kindly address the gathering honorable chief guest of the day mrs justice indira banerjee madam is joining very shortly was way back from calcutta and reaching here within 10 20 minutes honorable mr justice anil kumar sinha jet supreme court of nepal not only guest of honor he is a patron of this program also as a professor menon student madam mrs arsila sinha madam is here honorable mr justice arjuna obesekra jet supreme court of sri lanka and justice mr justice safar ahmed high court of high court division supreme court of bangladesh both are joining on online i think it is already joined professor manoj kumar sinha director in the law institute my institute sri r venkatramani senior advocate and uh, our we will say this is uh, you know leading this and their program mr manohar tairani president lloyd law college and co chair of this program my colleague professor dr lisa pilupos professor gjs ipu university and deputy administrator of this program our regional administrators they are joining on online plat through online platform professor vp tamil maran uh, rishikesh wagla from nepal Professor Falki Hap from Royal Institute, Cambodia. Dr. Mariam. Professor Prashant. Dr. Sagi. Mira Futado from UK. We are fortunate uh, to have Mr. Ramakrishna Menon, son of our guru and mentor, Professor Menon, is with with uh, on joining through online. Mr. Kumareshan is here. He is representing Thomson Reuters along with his friend Prashant. uh professor mohammad salim director lloyd law college and general coordinator of this program dr agilesh kumar khan deputy director doyal law college and secretary general jural conclave dr madhukar sinha deputy director academics here the, uh, we know three programs dr um, dr navneet is coordinating the moot court and then their event professor mallikarjuna judicial colloquium and professor vikram singh uh, students conference and mr robin jacob is coordinating with judges uh, for the adjudication of not only the mooting competition and other competitions too and esteemed panel of judges from asian countries and uk they have joined online most importantly my dear participants Hello, faculty colleagues, dear students of Lloyd, and faculty members who are tirelessly working, ladies and gentlemen. A very good evening to you all. The Jural Conclave has started with a positive and optim positivity and optimism has come to a magnificent end. at the outset let me congratulate all the participants and winners it was a really marvelous event of mooting students conference and judicial colloquium where we i personally also witnessed the active participation from 
the young talented students and young researchers and faculty members my congratulations to all those who put their hard work to make this event very successful when this uh, students they are having exam also uh, in the midst of exam tomorrow also they have exam but they are putting all effort to make this program uh, very success uh, they made it also thank you my dear students we are extremely honored to have honorable mr just uh, Uh, justice anil sinha is with us this is his commitment he got an opportunity a family function he clubbed because he felt that this program is also going on that is the true student of professor manon he sent a message today to me then he made possible to attend physically thank you justice along with madam i think next year as a pattern of the program he will come physically next year also madam please make it a point this is an open inv invitation to you for next year yes we are extremely honored and grateful to honorable ms justice indira banerji judge supreme court of india who has kindly consented to be the chief guest actually madam had a program in uh, in his, oh, her hometown she is she left from there she is reaching within 10 or 15 minutes and joining with us he has she has consented to release the book titled gender justice a south asian perspective and she uh, wrote a wonderful forward also to that book I, as i stated yesterday also this is a tradition the judge who is the chief guest of the program will release the book and write the foreword now we are again we are um, proving we are um, uh, no, following that tradition and practice i have no doubt this foreword is an really an eye opener for gender justice madam took uh, good num time and wrote a wonderful foreword i uh, congratulate our thomson reuter new generation people commemoration and team is here they have very beautifully printed and made it possible to release function today thank you very much ms commemoration and press the colloquium and the conference i'm not taking much because uh, rashi has to leave uh, spoke about technology and future of law and diverse constitutional framework in asia there has been uh, the uh, uh, argument came like that there has to be a balance of influence and reliance of technology on the human life the balancing competing interests in society along with technological development should be the priority in this instance i would like to quote two uh, eminent personality i quote professor kim j vincenti i quote technology with all its promise and potential has gotten so far beyond human control that it's threatening the future of mankind and quote again i quote stephen napo our future world will have to find equilibrium in in the technology pendulum swing and quote coming back to my mentor professor nr madhav menon the conclave he as his contribution in model legal education and as well as the legal reform in india is known to everyone in a way that's why we well wishes together we are continuing his legacy and in the name of our guru our beloved guru professor menon has completely devoted himself to revamp the law curriculum and 
it was due to the efforts that the five year course in place resulted into now he in the um, eight um, after 2018 he is having a mission or vision to fulfill that the law school should produce practice ready professional practice ready practitioners lawyers now we mr venkatramani professor lisa and we all his students just sinna professor manoj we are going in that direction how much we can do in this uh, line we are uh, committed to do the same now uh, we are uh, mainly focusing on to make this kind of professionals professionally efficient and socially committed to i'm not taking much time i would like to acknowledge and appreciate again the tremendous hard work and input as well as the uh, you know uh the coordination done by lloyd law college faculty my dear students under the leadership of mr manohar tairani professor salim and dr agilesh kumar we made this program a very success along with me or there is an n number of milad colleagues are working under the patronage of mr venkatramani lisa p lucas and many people truly an indian uh, you know even we can see the judges who are um, uh, evaluated in the last round uh, sri lankan supreme court judge one judge from you uh, know southernmost part one judge from andhra one from rajasthan delhi like that we are considering all, all the geographical thing also in that way and so interestingly they are whenever we are requesting them they are very much interested because of one name professor nr madhav menon in the end i would like to conclude my address by quoting winston churchill who said i quote success is not final failure is not fatal it is the it is the en- uh, courage to continue that counts i unco thank you thank you your lordship we have a slight change in the program a guest of honor honorable mr justice anil kumar sinha judge supreme court of nepal has to leave early before i request justice sinha to deliver the special address I take this privilege to introduce his lordship Justice Sinha was appointed judge at the Supreme Court of Nepal in August 2016 prior to this he was designated as senior advocate at the Supreme Court of Nepal in 2013 his lordship has been an active consultant and coordinator of various projects he was national consultant for public private relationship for urban environment for a UNDP project He was also consultant for establishment of early state hydro power equity fund for a development bank and coordinated a survey for harmonization of hydro power laws of Nepal. He has also co-authored many manuals, book chapters and has been an active contributor on legal issues. I humbly request your lordship to kindly address the gathering. thank you honorable justice madam indira banerji will be here very soon honorable justice azuna obasekar honorable justice sheikh hasan ali professor dr manoj kumar sinha mr r venkatramani and mrs venkatramani professor dr s kumar 
my uh, friend Manohar Thairani ji, Professor Dr. Lisa Lukos, Professor Dr. Mohammad Salim, Dr. Achilles Kumar Khan, other distinguished guests, participants, organizers, and my dear wife, Arsila Sinha. Wherever I, have, I attend such valedictory session, I always enhance my own knowledge from such outstanding teams of, uh, of organizers and young students. Young students aspiring uh, the, uh, to be a young professional very soon and all those who have addressed this session also. Only true visionaries can dedicate themselves to plan such program and participate. This time, the organizers have structured it so well, blending the diversified streams, allowing opportunities to demonstrate vision and knowledge, clogged with skills, through meeting, uh, meeting students' conference, judicial colloquium, and research paper presentations. What better tribute can we, we all give than this to our respected mentor, Professor Dr. Madhav Menon? As always, I deem it great honor and privilege to be associated with, the, with, with his name. And to tell you very frankly that I was never ever a formal student of Professor Menon. We just met a couple of times after 1993 and somehow we were in touch all the time, uh, almost uh, one month before he unfortunately expired. Opportunity to witness the release of the book on uh, public law and good governance and international journal Lex, Lexis Entia by Honorable Justice A.M. Khanwalikar and uh, General Justices South Asian Perspective and International Students Journal Lloydians by Honorable Justice Indira Banerjee makes this program more historical. At the outset, I express my thanks to the organizers for inviting me as a special guest of this Professor Yana Madhav Menon, Asian General Conclave 2021-22. I must congratulate, congratulate Lloyd's Law College for having organized such programs successfully and leading the vision and initiative of, to the seventh year from SARC countries to Asian countries for the first time. Milat's involvement can never be forgotten. The organizers and participant, participating students need a round of applause for conducting and for being part of this uh, program with the gestural enthusiasm under these difficult circumstances of pandemic that has changed the whole perspectives of the life, people's life and basic needs. Thank you all. Law students and studies are highly competitive and so is the uh, career in the legal field. When young law students graduates into the legal profession, they will undoubtedly be exposed to difficult situations that will demand them to make difficult decisions with ease and preciseness. Uh, my own grandfather, who was the first uh, senior advocate of Nepal and his license number was one, once told me that a lawyer should live like a hermit and work like a donkey. And I'm not sure whether the donkey word is uh, correct or not at this moment, but certainly it's a difficult task. And that's what I saw here that despite the examinations, you all are working day and night uh, for this. So thank you very much. And I congratulate and I appreciate this. <clears throat> when young law graduates enter into law, law profession, they will be undoubtedly, undoubtedly be exposed to difficult situations that will demand them to make difficult decisions with ease and preciseness. It is a tremendous exercise for the young mind for developing researching skills understanding of law and application of law in more logical and practical approach towards challenges. Academics, extracurricular activities, and social life all play a vital role in every student's life. Dear students, it is a way to strike the very root of your thinking on application of law. Law as a profession provides valuable service throughout the society in both the public and private sphere. Programs like this help students build strong sense of justice and determination to alleviate injustices in society and beyond. Law students can take many advantage from such uh, programs and competitions. Needless to say, they enhance their skills 
and make their dreams a reality. A lawyer to be can be trained by competitive in, uh, for competitive environment outside the law school from these activities. Many of these act uh, competitions are essential for a promising car career and for leadership capabilities. Students must have learned many skills here that you have not, uh, that you do not get uh, in law books or from the law school lectures. Participants from different countries must have shared knowledge on comparative legal systems and legal education. It is important to note that the role of a law student is undergoing significant change, leaving the political boundaries behind. The organizers have chosen topics like constitution and constitutionalism, constitutional change and constitutional stability, international law and constitution making, international human rights and the constitution and legal pluralism and political pluralism uh, for the judicial colloquium and technology and future of law for the students conference. In this era of globalization, the laws beyond boundaries, knowledge is not only occupied by acts or the courts, but also people's thoughts, skills and experiences in uh, the diversified fields, including technology. Judicial system and access to justice are now highly dependent on digital platforms and artificial intelligence. Hence, its limitations and interventions has to be carefully determined. In our judicial administration, our own experience has compelled us to plan to implement soon the use of technology for random assignment of cases to judges, even at the Supreme Court level of Nepal, in our daily cause list, as well as the weekly cause list, and also in all levels of the judiciary. I'm not very sure which uh, court in India has got this system, but uh, we are will be implementing it uh, within four, three months now. It is not only constitutional provision that will establish rule of law in any country and lead to prosperity. It is the appropriate implementation of constitution of, and law and this and determination of political leadership to abide by the principles of constitutionalism. A constitution with fusion of best uh, constitutional principle principles may look ornamental, but may not essentially deliver stability if thoughts for quick constitutional change for convenience can be read between the lines of constitution and minds of those who are part of making it and implementing it. And I possibly not exactly, not verbatim, but I have actually read it somewhere uh, in some of the lectures of um, the father of Indian constitution where here quoted that we should not leave spaces open for constitutional changes very often. Constitution making has to be tailored to domestic needs, though it is also importantly influenced by international law and practices, countries geopolitical positioning, changing perspective of human rights, rule of law, gender issues, people's aspiration for basic need, hunger for establish hunger, and stability, life's life stability and economic prosperities can never be forgotten. Constitutional provisions must be given free recourse to mature. Change or amendments should be taken as a natural recourse for its development in long run. We all need to, uh, need to be aware of a trend that such call for change is becoming a tool to grab or remain in political power and for their adventurism at the cost of people's life. My country, Nepal, constitutional, constitutional and political development during the past few decades can be a good subject and example for students to research. I am confident that this competition brings critical components for law students to acquire expertise in, their respect, uh, in those aspects of constitution, law and lawmaking and need of society and social justices. Before I conclude, I would like to express sincere appreciation to the organizers and the team for their uh, novel efforts in arranging all this gathering of judges, lawyers, academicians, distinguished persons, and most importantly, the students across the Asian nations and you all present here physically. I congratulate all those who participated in each of the session and were applauded for their contributions. Winners get trophies. Others are more importantly prized with knowledge and skills and the awesome networking opportunities for the surrounding.
an asset for you all students for future. My prayer for you all's better health, peace of mind through law and prosperous future will continue. Thank you. Please welcome our chief guest, Honorable Miss Justice Indira Banerjee. Thank you, Your Lordship, for the special address. May I now request Honorable Miss Justice Indira Banerjee, Judge Supreme Court of India, to felicitate. We shall now proceed with the release of the book and the journal. The book, Gender Justice, A South Asian Perspective, is edited by Professor Dr. S. Siva Kumar, Professor Dr. Lisa P. Lukos, and Mr. Manohar Therani. The book primarily addresses various issues relating to prejudice on the basis of gender. First copy to Anil Kumar Samaji. May I now request Honorable Miss Justice Indira Banerjee, Supreme Judge Supreme Court of India, to present Mr. Anil Kumar Sinha with the first copy of the book. Law College, Lloyd Law College publishes Lloydians, an international biannual peer-reviewed publication. The journal provides an excellent academic platform to law students across the world to showcase their researching and writing skills. May I now request Honorable Miss Justice Indira Banerjee to present the first copy of Lloydians. May I now request 
Honorable Miss Justice Indira Banerjee to present the first copy of Lloydians to Professor Dr. Manoj Kumar Sinha. Thank you, Your Ladyship. May I now request Honorable Miss Justice Indira Banerjee, Judge Supreme Court of India. To felicitate Mr. Justice Anil Kumar Sinha with a shot. Mr. Anil Kumar Sinha has to leave. Mm -hmm. um. Thank you, Your Ladyship. Now I request Honorable Miss Justice. Give an order. Thank you, Lordship. Thank you, Ladyship. Thank you, everyone. We shall now proceed with the event. We have amongst us Mr. R. Venkataramani. Mr. R. Venkataramani, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India and Co-Chair Asian Jural Conclave. So, I very humbly request you to kindly enlighten us with your words.
with great pleasure, let me welcome Mrs. Indira Banerjee. Mrs. Banerjee is not new to Lloyd's and I think she's one of her heartfelt uh, supporters. And what a wonderful garland of judges we have yesterday and today from across SAR countries. And so let me welcome Justice Sabar Ahmed from Bangladesh, Justice Arjuna Padesikre. And uh, it's indeed a great pleasure to be with all of you young minds. Let me take you a bit into what I passionately feel about this event. Before I do that, I find uh, it's heartening to notice there's a larger number of uh, female students here. What a beautiful thing that's happening to our country. I mean, that means that the levels of civilizational understanding in our country, the ability to go beyond lines drawn on culture, tradition, and knowledge is happening. I welcome each and every one of you here as my personal students, and you're welcome to come and join my chamber every evening to learn something about law and justice. I should say that you're fortunate enough to be present in this event. Beyond your classrooms, the textbooks, and your dialogue with your teachers. Without uh, doubt, one of the tallest figures in legal education, not only in India, but across the globe, and I mean Professor Madhav Menon, is the reason behind your presence here today. That invisible hand, that invisible tall figure is the reason behind your presence today. I want each one of you to spare some time to know more about him and how his untiring work and vision has made your entry into this place and into this even possible. And I make it a very serious request to you. This grand conclave of students, teachers and judges is for the benefit of students and to lay open fascinating avenues of inquiry. The humble beginnings of this Sark Moot Court event under the personal tutelage of Professor Manon, but the Sark Mooting event has now blossomed, blossomed in many ways, into a multi-dimensional legal conclave and a congregation. Our resolve, seven years, it was a Sark Moot event. But uh, notwithstanding the onslaught of COVID and all the impacts it had and what called the limitations on human actions, we resolved that Sark is not enough. We, as students of Professor Menon, wedded to understanding law and justice in ways that is Menon taught, resolved that we must go beyond the Sark Asian, Sark region level. And came the idea of the Asian Jural Conclave. That's why I want to tell you hundreds of hundreds of moot courts happen in our country and different parts of the world. They are moot courts. And every moot court is important for you to learn something out of what you learn in law and to become, you know, something larger than what you learn in law in the student, in the classrooms. But beyond the importance of a mooting event in sharpening your skills, in research work, so on and so forth, which are the usual aspects and the very important aspects of mooting, we thought that we must go beyond only a mooting event and to draw students, judges, and academicians into a larger legal congregation. And, and we thought before we launch into the, at the global level, let us start at the Asian level. Modest beginning, but a very important step in our understanding. And that's why we saw the Asian Jural Conclave. The study of law, I say, is a grand invitation to be a full member of each one of our societies. It's an invitation to be a full member of each of our societies. I repeat that. 
the role of the legal professional is no longer that of an isolated individual only tied up to a few cases here and the litigation work in court. And uh, a lawyer is, I think, is a unifying thread of multitude of dimensions of social order and evolution. What happens every day in courts or in parliaments and legislative assemblies or in public spaces, such as the media or a mirror of how, or a mirror of how we mingle and manage our differences and challenges. And that's the challenge of study of law. How do we learn to accomplish this one other's task? To each one of you is this question addressed and take it very seriously. And from each one of you, we demand commitment and take that also seriously. Democracy and rule of law in our countries has made our engagements in these possibilities and uh, pursuits possible. Think deeply, think passionately, and my appreciation, and having said that, at a level of my commitment and wedded to Professor Manon as a student of more than 42 years ago, having said all that, and uh, since Professor Lloyd's Law College has been fortunate enough to have invited him and to have been able to receive him and to have hosted this event in the past seven years, I should say that perhaps this idea of commitment to honoring a teacher both before, during and after his lifetime and use and then expand on his visions and commitment to justice education, law and justice. This, this commitment, according to me, is what is propelling us today. And I'm sure all of you who are here physically present and those of you who are present online during because of our difficulties we face today. And I'm sure in the next year in the physical space, I think probably the director, Dr. Manoha, will have to find a little more accommodation outside this assembly to ensure that the huge number of students will be present here the next year, I think will be a, a grand, grand thing to happen. I wish that happens. So my appreciation of all the students who have participated in the MOOT and students' conference events, and that you did this online and did well with equal enthusiasm you deserve a huge applause. All those who did it online deserve a huge applause. And uh, do it, and then next year, we will greet each other warmly in the physical space. So one last statement, and um, those the judges from various parts of the you know, world, particularly the SARC region, and uh, the academicians who have been visiting this event year after year, I find there is a growing bond. There's a new family. Lois and this uh, Professor Manon Moorcourt even is blossoming into a new family of right-minded thinkers and visionaries and those with commitments to the idea of justice education, not only in India, but across the globe. And I'm sure with the participation and engagement of young minds like you in, in times to come, this vision and commitment will definitely blossom into a huge banyan tree. I invite each one of you to be part of the huge banyan tree of pursuing law, justice on fair and equality basis. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir. We have with us Professor Dr. Manoj Kumar Sinha, Director, Indian Law Institute, New Delhi. Prior to joining ILI New Delhi, Professor Dr. Sinha served as professor of law. Thank you very much. I think uh, that okay, is on, huh? okay. we are getting late. So I would like you to give the special address. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Justice Ms. Indra Banerjee, Judge Supreme Court of India. Honorable Justice Mr. Anil Kumar Sinha, Judge Supreme Court of India, Nepal. Uh, Honorable Justice uh, Jafar Ahmed, Sir, Judge High Court Division, Supreme Court of Bangladesh and Justice Arjun Obisuke, Judge Supreme Court of Sri Lanka, and uh, Sri Manohar Tehrani Ji, Professor Sip Kumar, Professor Mohammed Salim, Professor Lisa Lucas, and all the young students, teachers, colleagues, very warm good evening to all of you. It's a great pleasure to be here, and it's always be great pleasure. And I thank uh, profusely to Professor Sip Kumar, sir, 
for bringing me here and always I'm very thankful to you, sir. And I remember very much, I knew Professor Mohan, uh, Professor Madhav Menon, sir, but never knew so closely. If I came close to sir, it's because of you and we had number of opportunity. And in fact, I feel very fortunate that I had visited his home in, uh, in Trivendram. And I learned a person, it's not only the simplicity what, what was reflected outside, also at home, when I entered his home, I found it's really teacher's home. So you feel very touched, which I see in Bengal when you go to the judge's house, minister's house, you feel the simplicity reflects from the each house. So that is the touch I got from the sirs, and I'm very happy. I promise to be very brief, but teacher doesn't know what qualifies brief. Sometimes they go on and they say, okay, I was very brief or precise, but I'll try to be very brief in my talk today on three important aspects or three phases. The three phases, because the rest constitution, law and justice and other aspects have been shared. So three phases, which I primarily see pre-COVID phase, during COVID, and waiting for the post-COVID phase. So like pre-COVID phase, we are grown in the pre-COVID phase, you, me, and others. We never thought a day will come where we'll always wear masks and we'll always be in line. Line means I'll come later, what I mean line. We learned standing in the line to watching a movie. We have to wait it for a long time in the queue and finally you got a ticket, so you're very relieved. Waited in, online for the reservation of a railway ticket. But you did like you no know, thing or everything on online, but we did online. But we never realized our life will become online in the 2020 onwards. So entire life was become and confined to a computer and like in you know, a mobile. Just our world was in the computer. But that computer has brought a lot of individuals together in a very inexpensive manner and connected worldwide. We have many opportunities today which we have witnessed. So Online is like, you know, this is the opportunity what I have seen, there is a hope. Online will end or online will merge with hybrid mode. Hybrid mode means online will stay and offline classes will start, offline lecture will start. And this like, you know, first time after 22 years or maybe 27 months, I'm witnessing and many of us are witnessing a big crowd. And I hope this continues and we enter in the post COVID situation. Today is an occasion where we must think about what is happening, not in India, what is there in the Indian constitution. You all have to think yourself as a citizen of the world. Today, we are living in an era and definitely you will become a citizen of the world, which you are not confined to a notion of territory. Notion of territory will become only notional. So you will be confined to a territory for your passport, your identity but you will be allowed in 10 to 20 years to move freely across the world. You will move from migrate from one country to another country in the search. And in true sense, you will become to like a you know, citizen of the world, which was thought by the Immanuel Kant, in seven, Immanuel Kant in 1794. He wrote a book, Perpetual Peace, where he has mentioned about the cosmopolitan law and cosmo citizens of the world. He said he one day will come if like we work on the Republican principles and in, uh, our relations are voluntary cooperation among the nation states. If we reach on that stage and we are there, and we are what we are witnessing, why I have brought this one, uh, the moment we confine ourselves, it's more become, we always think about our own system we have. And what is happening in the case of currently in the uh, Ukraine and Russia. And this reflects institution which was created so Russia was also one of the founding members of the Russia, United Kingdom, France, China, and United States. These five members, they played important role in creation of United Nations on 24th, 4th October, 1945. So they played very important, these five states. So they are the like founder, they are father of the United Nations, these five states, and India also become like, you know, founding members, but it was not played the role the way these five states have played in the foundation. Today, Russia, and they have grabbed some powers also under the Security Council as the veto power. So Security Council has the, like these five members have a veto power and that has been reflected. So foundation which was created to maintain international peace and security, meant to promote human rights and development globally. It's not confined to the world. So it was globally that foundation has a serious threat in today's. 
like just two days uh, yesterday when security council was talking about uh, a passing a resolution against the russia and unfortunately russia is currently the president of the security council so they preside the meeting resolution was about the russia and russia presided the meeting and since russia has veto power that resolution has been vetoed on that particular and that has not been taken but there is a possibility it will go to the general assembly in a day or two uh, what i wanted to convey there are two three things which are very important what we have witnessed and which also has brought some new dimension in our thinking regarding the refugees internally displaced person and migrant workers the way poland romania and uh, slovakia they open their territory and welcoming everyone like you know all the women and children are easily moving from the uh, ukraine and already they moved so there's no problem if you compare the situation of 2022 with situation of 2050 when syrian people like you know, a crisis happened in syria and when they wanted to cross international border it was a lot of international issues whereas in the 2020 neither united nations unhc or anybody is talking about uh, movement of the people because it's a free country origin of uh, uh, like you know state of origin and host states both are working and for why they are like you know opening their border very easily they believe these population will go back if situation comes to normal they are not going to stay so what is important if a state believes like a state like india believes that people from the other states are going to stay in india temporarily then there is a possibility change of perception and application of the welcoming the refugees or asylum seekers will be easy, which has been proved correct in the case of Ukraine. Currently, we are saying I'm sure that Ukrainian people will go back when situation becomes very normal in days to come. So I see that is a new development, which is refugee law, those who scholars we have to look into. The another point which I have in my mind to discuss with you when we talk about because this conference is also in the related with the commonwealth comparative constitution and today what i have learned so kumar sir and uh, like you know honorable justice Banerjee, ma'am uh, when i had an opportunity in the international human rights and constitution law situation and honorable justice very forceful justice arjun overseek which were there and he spoke about the fundamental rights guaranteed under the Sri Lankan constitution. And what is important to note, they have a provision under the constitution, which talks about under article 11 of the Sri Lankan constitution talks about the prohibition against torture clearly. So we don't have any provision which has been subsequently interpreted and enlarged under the article 21 of the constitution about that. That is one. When I ask them about the enforcement, we have a constitution fundamental rights and also we have remedies that importance you have to realize we have rights and we have remedies under the article 32 and 226 that is not there so when i asked him which he missed to mention and then i put a question to sir lord Sip, ki, what about the remedies so he said ki, we did not have a remedies for a number of years but in 1978 they have brought the remedies like enforcement so that is very important similarly in the bangladesh constitution so i feel the initiative which has been taken by the Lloyd Law College and Millet, and uh, there we can discuss more about the comparative constitution in our own uh, regions, particularly in the sub-regions like South Asian countries, which will make all of us familiar. So a lot of things we live very close, but we have no idea. So we, I, even I learned in the first day how Sri Lankan constitution uh, talks about the fundamental rights, rights, which is more or less in Indian line except remedies have come a little bit later. So there are a lot of things are there in the constitution and I'm sure the activities which has been going on for last many years I have seen participated here in the Lloyd Law College under the leadership of Tahirani uh, Sahab and also Mohammed Salib and of course Professor Shiv Kumar sir. I see a hope, a great hope post pandemic most like you know pandemic situation will change and will come more frequently as like you know Venkat Ramin sir has pointed and given a task to sir that enlarge your auditorium more people will join and will be very happy to be participating in this activity with this I wish all you all the best for all the young students those who are going to appear in the examination you pass with the high marks and do well in your life thank you very much Thank you, sir.
It is an honor to introduce Honorable Mr. Justice Zafar Ahmed, who has joined us online. Honorable Mr. Justice Zafar Ahmed is Judge, High Court Division, Supreme Court of Bangladesh. His Lordship obtained his LLB honors and LLM from University of Dhaka. He further completed his LLB honors from London Metropolitan University, UK, and Bar Vocational Course, BVC, from BPP Professional School, London, UK. His Lordship was elevated to High Court Division in June 2012. I request His Lordship to kindly give the special address. Thank you. Uh, can, you can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, um, thank you, the um, organizers, for inviting me. I understand time is very precious for all of us. So, um, Her Ladyship, Madam Justice Indira Banerjee, Honorable Justice of the Supreme Court of India, Honorable Mr. Justice Anil Kumar Singha, Judge Supreme Court of Nepal, Honorable Ms. Justice Sapna Pradhan Malla, Judge Supreme Court of Nepal, but as I understand, they have left for uh, some urgency. I will uh, make my speech very brief. As you have heard that uh, I studied law in Bangladesh. Basically, I understand I am a bit shaky up saying something about uh, the same something before Madam Justice Indira Banerjee, the judge of the Supreme Court. So my focus is mainly the students who are present here. When I, uh, when I was studying law in Dhaka University, we were following the Indian textbooks. Uh, as we all know, the uh, basic laws are all the same. Although in India, uh, they have uh, enacted new Code of Criminal Procedure, CPC, but the basic principles are still more or less, more or less same. It is very interesting to note how the judges of the Superior Courts, they think. In November, 2020, two years back, I was doing, I was presiding over a bench and uh, I was dealing uh, a narcotic case. A issue raised whether the uh, total substance, the whole substance test should be applied or the purity test should be applied. I came across a decision of the Indian Supreme Court, Hira Singh, uh, that was reported, no, not Hira Singh, so, sorry, E. Michael Raj, that was the uh, 2008 case. It was reported in the Supreme Court cases, 2008. And that case, the Indian Supreme Court applied the uh, purity test. I went to the entire text, the rationale behind it, why the Indian Supreme Court applied the purity test. Then earlier, earlier in our jurisdiction, in 1996, our Supreme Court, that is the Appellate Division, applied the whole substance case in a uh, drug-related case, which was uh, basically heroin of uh, around three kilo. So I found a bit, you know, uh, conflicting decision. But uh, Indian decisions are persuasive for us, and the decision of the Appellate Division are binding for us. But the question, you know, the it kept, kept coming in my mind why there are two different opinions of these top apex courts of the two jurisdictions, why the situations, are, situations the prevailing uh, circumstances are same, but they thought in a different manner. Then I continued my research. Then I came across another case of Indian Supreme Court, Hira Singh, that was uh, decided in... 20 on in April 2020, it was a very recent case. And in that Hira Singh case, the Indian Supreme Court uh, revisited the whole issue and applied the whole substance test and declared that E. Michael Raj, it was not a good law. 
I was a bit relieved. Now, relieved in the sense that uh, the apex court of both India and Bangladesh, they are thinking alike. That is the beauty of the law. You know, the law students, you have to continue your research and you have to always think about the ration. Why is that? Why is not that? My daughter, uh, she, she's a school going student and she keeps me asking one question very often that, isn't it very moral? Then I ask, then I answer, look, we are dealing with the law and we are applying the law. The lawyers argue before us. We uh, analyze the uh, sections and we apply it. Then my daughter, then she, she again asked me, isn't it very harsh? You know, your decision might, might cause some inconvenience to the litigants. Then I did a bit of research about the inconvenience that my daughter was frequently raising the issue. Then very interesting, I found a case uh, that is uh, the overseers of parish of Tonbridge, 1884. It is a uh, Queen's Bench decision. I found a passage and I, I will quote the passage and then I, uh, I will stop. It is often found that laws enacted for the general advantage do result in individual hardship and inconvenience. For example, laws of limitation, registration, attestation, although enacted for the public benefit may work injustice in particular cases, but that is hardly any reason to depart from the normal rule to relieve the supposed hardship or injustice in such cases. A construction that results in hardship, serious inconvenience, injustice, absurdity, or anomaly, or which leads to inconsistency or uncertainty and friction in the system, which the statute purports to regulate has to be rejected and preference should be given to that construction which avoids such results. According to the Brett, the master of the rules, the inconvenience necessitating a departure from the ordinary sense of the words should not only be great, but should also, should also be what he calls an absurd inconvenience. This is a theme, the absurd convenience when we strictly apply the law. This is something that we frequently encounter, and I believe this is encountered the benches of most, uh, almost all the jurisdictions. And it is the uh, role of the lawyers, bar and the bench to address. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you for inviting me. And if you allow me uh, to take, take leave because uh, our week starts from Sunday. So if you kindly allow me to take leave, it will be very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Lordship. It is an honor to introduce the chief guest of today's function, Honorable Ms. Justice Indira Banerjee. Honorable Ms. Justice Indira Banerjee is Judge, Supreme Court of India, she was elevated as the judge of the Supreme Court in August 2018, becoming the eighth woman judge at the Supreme Court. Her leadership is an alumnus of Loreto House, Calcutta, Presidency College, Calcutta, and Calcutta University College of Law. In February 2002, her leadership was appointed as judge of the Calcutta High Court. Further, she served Delhi High Court before being appointed as the Chief Justice of the High Court of Madras in April 2017. May I request Honorable Ms. Justice Indira Banerjee to kindly give the valedictory address. Uh, 
very good evening to you all. Professor, Dr. Honorable, Honorable Justice Zafar Ahmed, Honorable Justice Arjuna Obey Sekere, Honorable Justice Anil Kumar Sinha, who was here with us just now, but left a little while ago. Mr. Venkata Ramani, Senior Advocate of the Supreme Court of India. Dr. Shiv Kumar, Professor Manoj Sinha, Dr. Akhilesh Kumar Khan, Dr. Manohar Thairani, Professor Lisa Lukos, Professor Dr. Mamad Salim, distinguished persons present here today, and my dear students from different jurisdictions present here and who are attending this program online. First of all, I thank the authorities of, uh, I thank the authorities for giving me the opportunity to be here at this valedictory session of the Professor N. R. Madhav Menon Asian Jural Conclave. I feel a little sentimental being here that, this evening because on the last occasion when I came for the uh, moot court competition, Madhav Menon Professor Madhav Menon was himself here and physically present. I personally, <clears throat> I personally had occasion to meet him and I knew him quite well. Uh, you were just told that I was elevated as a judge of the Calcutta High Court in February 2002. And at that time, uh, Professor Madhav Menon was the Vice Chancellor of the National Univers University of Juridical Sciences in Calcutta. He was the founder, Vice Chancellor of the university. And later, he became the director of the National Judicial Academy in Bhopal. I met him, we used to have long conversations, and I must say, apart from his immense contribution to the cause of legal education in this country, I think he has had some contrib contribution on my thinking, on my thoughts as well. The world has shrunk considerably. And there is a lot of, lot of connection across the borders today. Talking about myself, I can say that my mother was educated at Eden College, Dhaka, which is now in Bangladesh. My father was born better and educated in Burma. I have four nieces who are very close to me, of whom two are in Singapore, <coughs> one in Kolkata, and one in Texas. I have a close cousin in Bangkok, and another one in Jakarta. So we are like a family, you know, all the Asian countries. I'm happy to have been invited on this occasion because I see amidst 
you students, the future of the judiciary across jurisdictions. As a judge of a constitutional court of this country, I take the liberty of referring to the Indian constitution. The people of this country have given to them, themselves a constitution which promises to secure to all its citizens justice, social, economic, and political, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith, and worship, equality of status and of opportunity, and to promote amongst all fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation. Earlier it was unity, the word integrity was added to the 42nd Amendment. Our country was constituted as a sovereign democratic republic. And again, the words secular and socialist were added by the 42nd Amendment. So we are a secular country committed to rights. We have fundamental rights in this country and the judiciary is the guardian of the constitution. When there is violation of rights, it's the judiciary on which falls the duty of ensuring that rights are not contravened, rights are not violated, no one is denied of rights. I have no hesitation in admitting that the best judgments come when we have counsel like Mr. Venkataramani here, who makes submissions before us. In a in an adversarial system, two sets of lawyers argue. The judges listen to both sets of lawyers, and then they take their decision. Therefore, in the judicial process, in the process of delivery of justice, the lawyers have immense importance. Very unfortunately, in this country, for decades, the discipline of law was neglected. Not much emphasis was given to the study of law. Most of the law courses were part-time courses. And often, people who didn't have anything better to do just join the law college to have a degree or a qualification added. The comments which have been made with regard to uh, judicial educa uh, legal education in this country by some of the law commissions, I'd rather not repeat here. I am thankful that the situation has changed. And today, law is one of the most sought after disciplines. There is immense competition in getting into law colleges. We have good students coming in and the quality of instructions have also improved considerably.
when my brief particulars were being mentioned while introducing me, it was mentioned that I was a student of Presidency College and I was a student of the Calcutta University College of Law. I can't help talk about one of my first experiences when I joined Law College. A classmate of mine introduced herself and wanted to know my name. I told her what my name was. The next very normal question was, from which college are you? So I said, which college I was from? I told her. The third question which was asked to me was, did you not get honors? Did you not secure honors? I was a little taken back, taken aback. What a, what a question. So I said, yes, I did secure honors. Then you could have done your masters. I said, yes, I was doing my masters. Then why did you join law? Is your father in the legal profession? I said, no, he was not in the law. He's not, at that time he was alive. I said, no, he's not in the legal profession. He's a retired officer of the Indian police service. Then why have you taken up law? I said, I want to practice. Will you be able to build up a practice in law without a background in law? I said, I don't know. Let me make the effort and see. I narrate this incident only to demonstrate the idea which people had about legal education and the law colleges then. We could never even think of a moot court. What is this moot court? Which Professor Madhav Menon had introduced in this country in a very big way. I don't think I really have to tell you about the various advantages of having moot court conferences, uh, moot court contests of this kind. The level of preparedness, learning to field questions, facing judges from different jurisdictions, and time management, which many of us lack. Trying to put your best point forward in a matter of a few minutes, which you must have learned from my previous speakers, particularly Mr. Venkata Ramadi there, who remind, reminded us that brevity is the soul of wit. Whatever has had to be said was said in a few words. I can see brilliant lawyers across jurisdictions in future, which will improve the quality of dispensation of justice in these countries and elsewhere. As I told you, I had occasion on numerous occasions to meet Professor Madhav Menon. And the first time I met him was when I was not even a judge. And then very soon after I became a judge. 
and we were discussing the constitution incidentally and the preamble to our constitution. He was a great advocate, a great champion of social justice. He advocated the cause of social justice and he believed in giving a purposive interpretation to advance the cause of justice. With brilliant future lawyers, I'm sure courts across jurisdictions will be able to uphold effectively the rights of persons. A reference was made to torture, which is taken care of by Article 21 of the Constitution of India as interpreted. But a reference may be made to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which was adopted way back on 10th December 1948. The right to equality, the right to live with dignity, the right to the basic amenities of living, the right against torture, so on, so on and so forth. These are enforceable rights across jurisdictions. These are basic human rights a person can claim by virtue of having been born a human being. I think I was given 15 minutes for my address. I was just going to say that before my elevation as a judge, I was a lawyer for 16 and a half years. So once I get the get a microphone to speak, I tend to speak a little more. But then Mr. Venkata Ramani has just taught us otherwise. Lawyers don't necessarily speak beyond their time. Just a few tips for the future of the judiciary across jurisdictions. What is expected of a lawyer? Remember the cause of the downtrodden, the disadvantaged, Try and do some cases. They may not be able to pay your fees fully. You may have to charge them less. May you, have, you may have to do some of the cases even without demanding your professional fees. But I can tell you, it will give you immense satisfaction and in this way, you will be able to pay something back to the society, which has given you so much. It is also remember, uh, important to remember that a lawyer undoubtedly has a duty towards his or her client. He has to be fully prepared. He has to argue his case well. He, used to, he has to answer the questions effectively. But he also has to remember that he is first an officer of court. And then a lawyer representing a litigant. So you are under no obligation to lie in court, even though your clients may have told you to do so. Particularly public prosecutors. Some of you may be defending cases on behalf of the state. You would have to remember the principle. 
that a person is presumed innocent unless proved guilty beyond all reasonable doubt. And even though those instructing you may advise you otherwise, you should ensure that no innocent person is ever punished. And I also do hope that some of you will aspire to join the judicial service so that the quality of delivery of justice also improved, improves. I wish every one of you physically present here, attending the session on, online, the students, a very bright future in law, whether as lawyers or as law officers or as judges. I congratulate all those of you who have participated in the moot court contest. It is not important to win. It is more important to participate. Participating in a moot court and not succeeding teaches you something which will be very important in future. Cases are also sometimes lost because the case may not have merits, not because the case has not been arguing with, argued well. Similarly, the result of the moot court may also depend on what the judges thought about the proposition and not necessarily the overall performance of the losing team. With that, I wish every one of you the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Your Lordship. As we come towards the end of the function, it is time for the declaration of results. May I request Professor Dr. Lisa Pilukos, Professor Guru Gobind Singh Indraprasth University, Delhi, Deputy Administrator, Asian Journal Conclave, National Administrator, India, to kindly declare the results of the competition. Honorable Miss Justice Indira Banerjee, Judge Supreme Court of India. Professor Manoj Kumar Singh, Director in the Law Institute. Professor S. Shiva Kumar, Senior Professor in the Law Institute. Mr. R. Venkat Shemani, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India. Mr. Manohar Tehrani, President, Lloyd Law College. Professor Muhammad Salim, Director, Lloyd Law College. Professor Agilesh Kumar Ghan, Deputy Director, Lloyd Law College. Dear faculty members and students. It gives me immense pleasure to announce the results of three days competition. We have set of awards and trophies. So let me begin with the Memorial Awards. Professor N.R. Madhava Menon Asian Jural Conclave 2022, second best memorial. It is being shared by two teams, AJC 28561, Bangladesh University of Professionals. The team members consist of Fabliha Masabin Rahman, SM Shakib, Muhammad Shabano Rahman. AJC 13929, Faculty of Law Jamia Millia Islamia. Team consists of Rafid Akhtar, Krushan Salim Suri, and Mohammad Kamran Ansari. Professor N.R. Madhava Menon, Asian Jural Conclave 2022, Best Memorial Awards. Again, this is jointly shared by two teams, Himachal Pradesh National Law University and Symbosis Law School, Pune. Uh, let me move to the individual awards. We have Best Student Advocate Female and Best Student Advocate Male. Best Student Advocate Female goes to AJC 11362. 
Kavya Venkatesh from Symbosis Law School, Pune. And best student advocate mail award goes to AJC 13929, Roshan Salim Suri, Faculty of Law, Jamia Milia Islamia. Let me announce the results of Law Students Conference. The runner up awards are being shared between AJC 60850 and AJC 11362. Neelam from Army Institute of Law, Mohali, and Mugund Agarwal from Symbosis Law School, Pune. Professor Ainar Madhavamenon Asian Jural Conclave Law Students Conference 2022 Best Presenter Award being shared between AJC 63858 and AJC 43618. Karishma Rikmi from Nepal Law Campus, Thriban University and Chirag Yadav from Amity Law School, Amity University, Haryana. The third component of the conclave, colloquium, uh, wherein the research scholars and faculty members presented their papers. Professor Ennar Madhavamenon, Asian Jural Conclave Judicial Colloquium 2022, second best research paper. It's being shared between HR Chirendi Sena Nayake, lecturer, Horizon Campus, Sri Lanka, and Dr. Shima S. Dhar, Assistant Professor in Law, Government Law College, Truantrum. Professor Ennar Madhavamenon, Asian Jural Conclave Judicial Colloquium 2022, best research award goes to Dr. Faisanur Rahman, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Law, Jamia Milia, Islamia, India. Um, because of the outstanding presentation and the outstanding writing style, two papers are being selected for Professor N.R. Madhavamenon, Asian Jural Conclave Judicial Colloquium 2022 Special Mention Research Award. And this is being shared between a lecturer and a PG scholar. Amina Jan Urmi, the lecturer from Bangladesh University of Professionals, and Manasi M, PG scholar, Indian Law Institute, New Delhi. Uh, let me also announce the team entitled for merit certificate for being qualified for quarterfinals. The eight teams uh, qualified for quarterfinals are Symposis Law School, Pune, Faculty of Law, Jamia Milia. Himachal Pradesh National Law University, Bangladesh University of Professionals, National Law College, Nepal, Amity University, Dubai, Nepal Law Campus, Thriban University, and University of Dhaka. The four teams which made two semi-finals with their outstanding performance. Faculty of Law, Jamia Milia Islamia, Himachal Pradesh National University, Shimla, Bangladesh University of Professionals, and Nepal Law University, Thriban University. Now, it's my pleasure to announce uh, the winning teams. With the permission of the distinguished dignitaries on the dais, let me announce the runner-up team and the winning team. Professor N.R. Madhavamenon Asian Jural Conclave 2022 Asian Round Runner-up Team Award goes to AJC 63858 Nepal Law Campus, Thiruban University. Team consists of Manisha Choudhury, Manish Lamichani and Karishma Rikmi. Professor N.R. Madhavamenon, Asian Jural Conclave 2022, Asian Round Winning Team Award goes to Team AJC 25980, Himajal Pradesh National Law University. Team consists of Angida Sharma, Ishan Singh Jain, and Siddhidhar Trija. I congratulate all the participants and especially the winners. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. May I request Honorable Miss Justice Indira Banerjee to do the honor for our guest and organizing team. First, I request Miss Justice Indira Banerjee to present a memento to Mr. R. Venkatramani, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India. Once again, I request Honorable Ladyship to present a memento 
to Mr. C. Kumarasan on behalf of Mr. Gauri Shankar Narasan, Vice President, Negwan Knowledge Works. Her ladyship is requested to kindly felicitate Professor Dr. Lisa P. Lukos with a memento. Thank you so much, Your Ladyship. May I now request our Asian Administrator, Professor Dr. S. Sevakumar. Honorable Ladyship is requested to present a memento to Mr. Manoj Kumar Sinha. May I now request our Asian Administrator, Professor Dr. S. Seva Kumar and Co-Chair of Asian Jural Conclave, Mr. Manohar Therani, to felicitate our Chief Guest and Guest of Honor. I would like to invite Mr. Manohar Therani to felicitate Honorable Miss Justice Indira Banerjee with a shawl. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ladyship. Thank you, everyone. Now, I would like to request Professor Dr. Mohammed Salim, Director, Lloyd Law College, General Coordinator, Asian Jural Conclave, to propose the vote of thanks.
Every, I request everyone to be seated. Sorry for the interruption. Please sit for a minute. We have your refreshments ready. As per protocol, I must have to, uh, to accompany the chief guest until uh, the lift. Good evening and thanks to everyone who is present over here, especially the students. And I'm extremely thankful to all the students who are present over here, be they the participants or the volunteers or all the, uh, all the uh, organizing committee, especially. So a very good evening to one and all present over here on behalf of the trustees, teachers, the students and organizing committee of Professor N.R. Madhva Menon, Asian Jural Conclave. I, Dr. Muhammad Salim, Director Lloyd Law College, feel extremely honored and delighted to propose the word of thanks to all the esteemed guests and participants of the valedictory function of Professor Anar Madhva Menon Asian Jural Conclave 2020-21-22, which comprises of mutual competition, law students conference, and colloquium held on 25th, 26th, and 27th of February 2022. This event is an attempt to appreciate and ensure the constant pursuit of practice and profession-centric continuing and quality legal education in India Asia and the whole world, which is initiated and advanced by our guru and guide, mentor and master Padma Bhushan, Professor Dr. N.R. Madhva Menon sir. As we all have witnessed this time, we have conducted the event in the hybrid mode and in person an online event. It is with immense pleasure that I propose thanks to all our esteemed guests. First of all, I would like to convey my deepest gratitude in absence of our chief guest of the function, Esteemed Chief Guest, Honorable Ms. Justice Indira Banerjee, Judge Supreme Court of India. In her presence, uh, this festival of this academic festival of today is a lesson to the legal fraternity, especially the participating teams from India, from Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, Dubai, and all other parts of the of Asia, and the students of Lloyd Law College, that learning of law requires learning in law learning the law in books and learning the law in practice in the problem solving perspectives through research, writing and deliberations this is the way forward for bringing the attention, time, support and guidance of the most honorable dignitaries of the bench and bar. Your leadership, we have extremely thankful, we are extremely thankful, we are, we are extremely thankful to our leadership for her presence in person, although she has been traveling from other part of the country. I am indebted and thankful to our guest of honor, in, in his absence, Honorable Mr. Justice Anil Kumar Sinha, Judge Supreme Court of Nepal, for his gracious in-person presence and always supporting the cause of the students and the legal education institutions in Asia. Lordship, his guidance, support and motivation are one of the most important elements of our education and growth perspective since many years. We are extremely honored and thankful by the presence of our guest of honor, Honorable Mr. Justice Arjun Obisikre, just Supreme Court of Sri Lanka. We are extremely thankful to and honored by the respected presence in person to our guest of honor, special guest, uh, guest of honor, Justice uh, Honorable Mr. Justice Zafar Ahmed, Judge High Court Division, Supreme Court of Bangladesh, Lordship, your constant pursuit deliberations and advocacy towards human rights, quality and enhancement in, pol in political and legal systems is a blissful guidance, support and motivation to all the students, teachers and judges of the Asian countries. I'm extremely thankful to the in-person presence of Professor Dr. Manoj Kumar Sinha, sir, Director Indian Law Institute. Sir has always been a great guide and immense support to Lloyd Law College in all its endeavors. We are blessed to have the distinct, distinct, we are blessed to have uh, the distinguished jurist with us, Mr. R. Venkat Ramni, sir, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India, former member, Law Commission of India, co-chair, Asian Jural Conclave, 
respected sir i am always thankful to you for your care and concern towards showing and employing transcendent thinking process in legal education institutions students teachers bar and bench all over the world i am thankful from the core of my heart to professor dr s shiva kumar sir senior professor indian law institute former member law commission of india administrator asian jural conclave for his immense and incredible support to lloyd law college and students and teachers and the whole fraternity we are always thankful to we are always indebted and thankful to professor dr uh, lisa p lucos professor ggs ip university deputy administration asian jural conclave for putting heart and soul to the clinical legal education process in india in sar countries in commonwealth countries and the whole of asia i am thankful to mr manohar therani president lloyd law college co chair asian jural conclave for always being a pillar of support and guidance and and light for all of us i am thankful to dr akhilesh kumar khan deputy director lloyd law college secretary general asian jural conclave for organizing this event and making it a memorable academic festival for all of us i am thankful to dr madhukar sharma sir deputy director lloyd law college coordinator asian jural conclave for his insightful contributions in all the events of this academic festival i am thankful to all the judges of this final rounds uh, namely justice arjuna obc kre justice pankaj bhandari honorable mr justice cs dais honorable mr justice ravina tilhari honorable mr justice uh, anit bansal i am also thankful to the judges of the semi final round namely honorable mr justice pradeep kant retired judge high court of judicature allahabad honorable mr justice vimlesh kumar shukla retired judge an acting chief justice former acting chief justice of allahabad of high court of allahabad and i am also extremely thankful to all the oc members organizing committee members of this wonderful event i would request all the oc members to kindly come here and uh, show your face and get a delight uh, i just request everyone to kindly clap big clap for the organizing committee members oc please come john please come all the oc members please come here sir sir this these people are the heart and soul these are the reason we are all here these are the re they are the reason which has created this event uh, in last uh, one and a half year they have been working tirelessly for this event they have been the source and and soul of this event they have brought the judges from all across asia to one platform and you can never see i i i am telling you you can never see a a competition or an event which is having in one competition so many judges of the high court and supreme court of various countries in one event only and this is the work of this oc dear friends and now we have decided very shortly we will uh, again we will assemble in this hall to uh, felicitate this organizing committee members and you know we have many faculty members also because you know we can't ignore their things yes sir. navin <laughs> smita navin sir uh, please come akhil, to the stage akhil, navin sir akhil uh, no, subur sir ma ma dr madhukar sinha uh, the you know, this malik sir Arjuna, please come doc i mean uh, mr robin jay vikram sir please please come sir robin sir yes very very silent but you know very meticulous Oh, even uh, uh, also, he is also part of organizing. They are the people who have made the difference in the very legal safe. education landscape of this country. Very safe. They are the people who made all the difference. Yes. And every good thing which is coming to this campus goes to Professor Dr. S. Shiva Kumar Sir, Lisa Ma'am, who have assembled all of us and provided a direction to this law school. We will. We will Huge ask. round of applause for all of them. Once their exam is over, I think you know, Professor Salim and Mr. Manohar Tehrani sir will organize this program in consultation. We will give we have to recognize them properly. That is very much needed. Because yes, sir has guided Dr. Shiv, Professor Shiv Kumar sir has guided us because of the paucity of time, because of the travel schedule of ma'am. We could not felicitate our OC members and our faculty members 
we are organizing very soon in the month of march an event with the sitting judge of the supreme court of india in which we will be uh, uh, felicitating all our oc members and the faculty members because you now madam recovered from uh, this pandemic you know to uh, uh, 10 days back still a problem with you know hand you know right wing this one lot of problem we got, got delayed for the forward also 15 days for that that's why we are not able to do it now we will have a tradition we will do it like this we will recognize properly thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you thank you i would request everyone kindly rise for the national anthem जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जल भितरंगा तव शुभ नाम जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे thank you everyone we have made arrangement for high tea so please take and then only leave the uh, the floor and kindly i request everyone to use the staircase for going down stairs because it will be uh, easy for you to go down stairs and thank you everyone for joining us thank you my uh, uh anchoring team all volunteers all the faculty members thank you <laughs>